One of the birds that we really wanted to film for the Sagebrush Sea is the Ferruginous Hawk. It's the largest hawk in North America. The adults are really beautiful birds. They're more evolved for prairie type environments, open country environments where there aren't a lot of trees and cliffs. So many Ferruginous Hawks will nest on steep hillsides. From experience working with a variety of raptors around the world, I know that Ferruginous Hawks are extremely sensitive and skittish around the nest. So the way we decided we wanted to do this was by using remote cameras where a camera can be placed and then the operator is hundreds of yards away where the birds have no idea that the operator is actually there. When you're filming with a remote camera, a lot of the preparation happens up front. So once you get everything set up the way you want it, then you have the opportunity to really just sit back and watch. It's a lot of waiting. These birds are just sleeping away. This is what I'm watching most of the time, sleeping birds. For me, being in a blind more than anything, it's uncomfortable. I'm six foot eight and I end up sitting on the hard ground most of the time for days on end. And my legs and my rear start to hurt quite a bit. <laughs> we filmed the nest at a point when the chicks were really pretty old and pretty independent. When the chicks are younger, the parents will come in and rip food apart for them and feed them. But as they get older and they're capable of handling larger prey items by themselves, the, the parents will just start dropping food off. And that's mostly what the parents were doing while we were filming. And the chicks were having to deal with these food items on their own and learning how to deal with these large food items. The nest was full of prairie dogs, but they all would always just want one of them. They got into these crazy squabbles over these prairie dogs where one, two, three, or even four of them were all tugging on it and trying to rip it, rip it apart or, or get it for themselves. The one shot I got that really blew me away the most is where the largest bird takes a really big white-tailed prairie dog that the other birds had tried to swallow, but they couldn't even come close to handling it. And he eventually just went back and gulped down this enormous prairie dog. I mean, you're looking at it, and the prairie dog's probably nearly the size of the bird's body under its feathers. It's just massive. They have this cool adaptation where their windpipe is attached to their tongue, and it comes very far up into their mouth. So when they're swallowing these large prey items, they sort of have this snorkel tube that they can still breathe through. It's interesting to watch them react to one another. In many ways, they're like children. Everything that's new around them it just makes them curious. Occasionally, a bird would wander out of the nest and kind of out of frame. All the other birds are looking at it very inquisitively, just like it's expanding their world in some way. And it's funny because they're so aggressive with each other when they're competing for food and they're hungry. But at all other times, when they're, you know, when they're cold or when they're satiated or they, they need to rest, then all of a sudden they become the best of friends and they're all huddled together as close as they can get. Sitting out there in the same environment with these birds, when the wind gusts against my blind, I see through the screen the wind ruffling the feathers of the birds and I know they're hearing the same sage sparrow singing just beneath their cliff that I am. It just really made me realize how vulnerable these birds are that nest in these situations. The chances of any one nest succeeding are very slim, so you need to have a lot of birds out there in different places and birds far away buried in these landscapes to ensure that some of them have success and actually fledge young.